It is a blessing of another brand new day to your viewers out there. Welcome to your favorite program in His Presence, a program that talks about the Word of God. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall all rejoice and be glad in it. And it's of the mercies of the Lord that has kept you and myself to witness another brand new day. We need to understand that it is God in His infinite mercies that has been keeping you and myself while we were asleep. Because the Bible makes us to understand that the angel of the Lord encamp around about it for the name of the Lord. The Bible in Psalm 16 verse 11 says, Thou shalt me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy and as is right and their pleasures forevermore i'm your host for today i'm akikunle akiola and the topic i have for you on this glorious day is be swift in your business joining us to discuss on our topic on this is apostle godwin akitola of the apostolic church in south africa is here to discuss with us on this day so another great privilege again for us to have you to come and discuss with us on this day thank you very much it's my privilege to be here again to speak and to uh, discuss on these issues i pray that uh, the lord will help us as uh, he allows these words to be a blessing to millions of our viewers here in the name of Jesus. God amen, bless you. Amen. Amen. So our topic today is be swift in your business. What does this mean? Yeah. Uh, we thank God for, again, this uh, great topic that uh, borders on uh, challenging us to effectiveness, productivity, and, and living a, a highly impactful uh, lifestyle, as uh, Paul uh, puts it straight in the book of Romans chapter 12. And Paul, uh, speaking there, has this to say. Romans uh, chapter 12, permit me to read it because this is very, very important. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. This, uh, if you like, three uh, Trinitarian principles that governs effectiveness in every area of our life, both spiritual, uh, physical, social, and of course in our, in every, in our emotional life, uh, is very important for us to get what Paul is trying to actually say. I believe Paul was writing to people, and the reason why he probably made this uh, expression, of course, he has already again told them to the people, of the, the Roman Christians, uh, the church in the Romans in, the, in, in the, that time, to engage the gifts of the Holy Spirit that is in them and to put them to profit, uh, product, productive use. And now he now goes on to say, be not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Uh, Paul was trying to, of course, uh, encourage his readers to engage, the, to, to, to depart from the low life uh, style to depart from the average lifestyle, to move to an excellent lifestyle. And as a Christian, of course, that is, that is incumbent on us. God expects that whatever we lay our hands on should prosper. Whatever we do should, should, should reflect excellence. And so to be, sloppy in business, to be swift in business, therefore, demands that we engage, number one, in a highly productive lifestyle in other words it must there must be a thirst towards excellence a thirst towards industry a thirst towards towards productivity uh, the word swift can of course which means in a, if you go to the dictionary it means to be prompt to 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 be smart to be uh, to, to to take things very, very I mean, immediate, to be immediate in whatever you do. That has a connotation of diligence. That has a connotation of excellence. That has a connotation of, of, of dutifulness, uh, which is, of course, uh, the flip side of slothfulness. And, and that, so when he says, be not slothful, he's saying, don't be lethargic. Don't, don't, be, don't, be, don't be apathetic about life. Don't be a lazy person. Don't be one who is very draggy 
in his or her business. But rather, therefore, in be, be to be, if you are not going to be draggy, if you are not going to be apathetic, if you are not going to be like a day sick in whatever you do, then you need to be prompt in whatever you do. You, mean, you, you need to be goal-oriented. You need to go for the best. You need to be, pursue excellence. So be, to be swift in business, therefore, means to engage the principles of diligence and determination. The principles of diligence and determination, which of course becomes the difference that, that makes the difference between the rich and the poor, the, the successful person and the, and the failure. You know, diligence is very, very important. And so engaging the principles of diligence and determination uh, uh, connotes being swift in, uh, in your business. Uh, Proverbs 22, verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He will not stand before me men. Rather, he will stand before kings. So, uh, I also say that to be swift in business also indicates or, or connotes to, to, to means getting things done at the right time. Getting things done at the right time with the right strategy. Uh, you know, getting the things done at the right time and with the right strategy. You, uh, you know, I, I remember what uh, I mean, uh, uh, Caleb said. In the book of Numbers, chapter thirty, and um, chapter thirteen, and verse thirty, Numbers chapter thirteen, verse thirty. You know, if you look, read from verse twenty-five, when the 10, 12 of them were asked to go and spy the promised land, and of course they came back, and ten people uh, brought evil report. They brought a, uh, uh, the word evil report means a, 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 they brought report that 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 dampened the the morale of the people. A report that um, a negative report, report that they couldn't take the land. But Caleb says something in verse uh, 30. He says, let us go up at once. Let us go up at once. Uh, it's not us quit being, don't, don't discourage these people. Don't, let, let us not be too, let us not think that we cannot achieve it. Let us not, let us not think that we cannot succeed in this venture. Let us move over now. Let us, be, let, us be, let us not be a draggy in this decision. You know, when, when Elijah told the, uh, the prophet of Baal, he said, why do you oscillate between two opinions? If God is God, serve him. You know, so taking the right decision, making the right move, I mean, getting things done at the right time with the right strategies, it, 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 that's, that's what life is all about. I mean, life rewards not those who wish for it, but those who work for it. So success is not guaranteed for the failures or for the, for the lazy or lily liver person, but for one who is ready to take decision and, and take action at the right time. And so being swift in business, therefore, means that you, are, you, you want to engage profitably the, the grace of action taking. You want to take action at the right time. You want to move at the right time. You want to do the right thing at doing it at the right time. And of course, being swift in business, again, also could note that you, uh, you, it means seizing the opportunity, seizing the opportunity of greatness, of success, or of business principles at the right time. Many people have gotten opportunity pass across them, but they have not been able to seize it. Rather, either by because of procrastination or because they were trying to, you know, trying to, okay, let's think about it the way, you know, the more you overstay on a particular opinion or, or, or decision, the more you delay your time of fulfillment. So seizing the opportunity at the right time, uh, that's also what it means, being swift in business. Of course, the word business there could, could be, uh, is, is all encompassing. It could be your assignment, your goals, your dream. Your, your, it, could be, it could also be literally the business that you are doing. Whatever you, you set out to do in life, it, you don't need to be lazy about it. You don't need, you don't need to, be, to, be, to, to be draggy about it. Rather, you want to move, take the right move, make the right move at the right time. That's what I believe being swift in business is all about. Mm, thank you so much. That's so profound. You actually gave us the first one is highly productive lifestyle. Then we need to engage the principles of diligence and determination. Then getting things done at the right time and with the right strategy and seizing the opportunity at the right time. That's so profound. Thank mm. you so much. Sir. And to our viewers out there, let's go on to our first music video. <laughs> Where I belong 
Being swift in business or being productive, being highly productive, seizing the opportunity at the right time positions you for greatness. Welcome back from that force. Music video individuals joining us. You're tuning into his presence on our topic today. Be swift in your business. And with us on this day is Apostle Godwin Akitola. So before we went to the previous break, you actually said uh, be swift in your business. Talks about highly productive lifestyle. Then we need to engage the principle of diligence and determination, getting things done at the right time and with the right strategy, seizing the opportunity at the right time. Now let's look at why should we be swift in our business? Then how can we be swift in our business? Yeah, this, that's very, very important. You see, um, you must understand, first of all, that life does not reward uh, a lazy folk or a lazy person. And uh, so it is important to know that the, the reason for doing what you do, why, why do I need not to be swift in business? And of course, uh, uh, that, of course, borders on understanding if I know why I'm doing a thing, it propels me forward. There is great reward for doing that. And the first thing you must understand is that uh, if you, why you have to be swift in business because being swift in business or being productive, being highly productive, seizing the opportunity at the right time, positions you for greatness. It positions you for, for, uh, for, for greatness or positions you for the right place at the top. You know, uh, the ground, the ground is for those who, of course, who complain, those who are lazy, who just treat life with uh, I don't care attitude, who, are, who treat life with do nothing mentality. You know, so if you, want, if you don't want to be among this lot, if you don't want to be among this crowd, then you need to step up your game. So, uh, which means, therefore, why do I need to be swift in business? Because I want to move to the top. Because I want to be among those who, who play the game at the top. Yeah, I want to be among those who will sit at the kings. You know, I, like I quoted Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. It says, See thou a man diligent in his business. He will not stand before me men, but he will stand before kings, before rulership. And of course, you know that if you work for the king, you know that what, you, the, 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 what, the, king's pays, what the king pays you will be different from what the main man will pay you. You know, so the two reason why you need to be swift in business is because, you know, if you are lazy in whatever you do, if you are lazy, if you are, if you are the, uh, not a goal-getting person, then you become, you, you live a life of being dominated in life. Uh, because uh, the one who is swift in business, the one who is productive, is the one that experiences dominion. In whatever it does but the one who does not who is lazy who is not who is indolent who is who is just like a day who is just who is just wishing that success will pass him by one of these days will be dominated by life and that's what the book of proverbs chapter 12 verse 24 says proverbs chapter 12 verse 24 i want to read in the new living translation it says work hard and become a leader then it say, be lazy and become a slave so, so you, it already solves it there. So if laziness makes you to be dominated. It makes you to serve your, your mate. So if I want to be, if I want to serve my mate, the only, the only uh, thing, recipe for that is laziness. But if I don't want to serve my mate, I need to be diligent, you know. And in the King James says, the hand of the diligence will rule, but the lazy man will be put under forced labor. Then why do I need to be lazy, to be swift? In business, why do I need to to be productive and to go up to go uh, to be to 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 t seize the moment? It because again because it leads to profit and satisfaction. You know, uh, I want to say that uh, unfortunately, many Christians, many Christians uh, think that uh, uh, being really, uh, spiritual uh, and praying and fasting. Uh, will only be the key for, for, uh, for dominion and um, profit or being blessed in life. Listen to me, God rules by principles. Life is governed by principles. There are principles that the scriptures have are, are set out for us to engage so that we can become who God wants to be. If we want to experience satisfaction and profit in life, 
then we must understand the power of industry. We must understand the power of, of productivity. We must understand the power of, of highly, being highly effective in whatever you do. And that's, that's what we are talking about this morning. So, and so the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 13 verse 4, Proverbs chapter 13 verse 4, it says, lazy people want much but get little. But those who work hard will prosper. We prosper. So I, I, I want to be swift in business because I want to prosper, uh, because I want to, to get profit and satisfaction in life. But you talk about how we need to be uh, uh, swift in business. Uh, these, are very, these are principles that we need to engage. And the first principle uh, that we need to engage is the principles of excellence. Uh, the principle of excellence. And of course, that is... That's, that's very, very important for us. God is the God of excellence. God does things excellently. To excel means to do things uh, uh, in an unusual way. You know, to do the usual thing in an unusual way. To do a common thing in an uncommon way. And so uh, when you excel, you put go for the extra. You, you think out of the box. So one of the ways to be swift in business is to learn the art of excellence. Never do things the way other people do it. Always add to go the extra mile. Always, always be attentive to details. Pay attention to detail. Do it very, do it excellently well. Be exceptional in whatever you do. If you want to start a business, don't do it the way other people are doing it. If you want to, for instance, you want to start a transport business, look at Uber, look at, look at uh, Texifier. All of these people have upped the game of transportation. Now, so that's one thing you must understand. And then the second thing is to engage the force of positive attitude. Positive attitude. The uh, attitude... Uh, is the difference between the failure and the success. Attitude is everything, uh, like, like, some, like someone says. And so that's why Paul says, he says, be, be not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit. The word fervent in the spirit there is very important. It's the colloquial Greek word that is used, zoe. Of course, zoe also means life, but it also means an attitude of, of positivity, an attitude of that, 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 that enthusiasm you know, a, a go-getter mentality. And that's what you see in the life of Caleb. The Bible says the difference between Caleb or Joshua and the rest of the ten uh, guys who went to spy the land of Israel is what the God says in the book of uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. He says, but my servant Caleb has another spirit. <laughs> so if you, you see in business, you must also have that another spirit, another attitude, some, uh, the, another translation saying, so, attitude of, I can do it. Paul says in Philippians chapter, 3, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things. You must engage that spirit of, I can. You know, when you already have defeated yourself, then defeat is already inevitable. But if you refuse to defeat yourself, nobody can defeat you without your permission. Nobody can make you miserable without your permission. And so, it is your inner strength, your inner disposition of, I can do it, I can make it. So in, 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 in being swift in business entails that you must also be positive. You must have that positive mentality. Have the fact that this business I'm doing, I will make it. Have the part that I will never fail in whatever I do. Why? The Bible says, whatever I lay my hands on, shall I prosper. You know, you have the spirit of God inside of you. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of excellence, the spirit of result. So that is already an attitude that you form in your spirit that makes you think that whatever I do, shall I prosper. And of course, it also means, another thing is you must engage the force of, I mean, uh, focus. Focus. A, 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 a one who is who, who has a goal set ahead of him uh, does not get distracted by public opinion or by spectators or by a naysayer or by people who are going nowhere. You must be focused on whatever you do. You must, you must, you must know that, this, for instance, this is July. July, the year 2018 is already going, uh, is, is, is going to come to an end very shortly. You know, but you set out to do certain things in January. The goals you wrote down for January, for this year, you already, we are, have you, have, how far have we gone by achieving that goal? You know, so many of us have been distracted. Many of us have allowed so many things to come our way and we have forgotten the primary things that we have set out to do. Paul says in the book of Philippians, uh, Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, he says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. 
focus on this one thing. A businessman that will succeed knows how to focus on this one thing. There must be that laser uh, focus on whatever you do. And I see you succeed in the name of Jesus. Amen, in Jesus' name. So mm -hmm. going into the open heavens written by our Father in the Lord, Pastor E. A. Adewoye, he wrote, When you critically study the life of our Lord, you will observe that he was a man who swiftly went about accomplishing his mission. John chapter 9, verse 4. He was in such a hurry to finish his task. Matthew chapter 17, verse 17. Amazingly, the everlasting impact he made took just three and a half years to accomplish. If you want to be like a master indeed, I encourage you to be diligent, not only in your service to God in the church, but also in your job or business. Our Father in heaven is not slothful in carrying out his assignments. Speaking about the Father's work ethic, Jesus in John chapter 5 verse 17 b says, My Father worketh it at all, and I work. The Holy Spirit's admonition on our expected work standards in today's memory verse is so profound because it captures the three aspects of our being body, soul, and spirit our christian experience must affect these three dimensions of our life before we can say we are living according to god's will for us physically we must be industrious in our day-to-day -day activities don't be deceived into believing that once you are born again manna will begin to fall from heaven to sustain you remember that the rain of manna stopped immediately the children of israel entered into the promised land they had to settle down to cultivate the land for a bumper harvest from god however pursuing your physical activities with vigor should not come at the expense of your spiritual life in this regard always have the words of the Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 at the back of your mind the bible says but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Hmm. This is very, very important. You see, uh, I, thank, I like the, see, Jesus has set for us an example for us to follow. Jesus uh, has the, engaged the work ethics. That is very, very profound. And that means being not slothful in whatever it does. He said that in that Matthew, in John chapter 5, verse 17, he says, My father walked either to, and I walk. Jesus was not a lazy man when he was on earth. And of course, there is no room for any Christian or any child of God to be lazy. Unfortunately, we have so many bunch of, many of us who are Christians today who, who will think that, well, because we go to church, we pray. Therefore, in that aspect of our life, the physical aspect of life, of our business endeavor will become slothful. You see Christian in their place of work sleeping off. You see they are taking excuses. They are not always around uh, to, to attend to the customers. So, but that is not an example that will uh, lead to uh, productivity in life, you know. So we must understand, like the God, our Father has said here, that God is the one that helps us to prosper. But if, as he helps us to prosper, we, must, it also, we, we need to partner with him. We need to align with him by also being productive in whatever we do. As he releases the grace upon us, as he releases the anointing to prosper upon us, then we must engage our hands in profitable venture. Amen. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much, sir. And so if you also let's continue to this short break. We'll be right back. In your presence, that's where I belong. In your See, God will help us, but as God will help us, we must also be willing to help ourselves. Welcome back from that break, and if you're just joining us, you're tuning into His presence on our topic today, Be Swift in Your Business. In the latter part of the Hope and Heavens, our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. Adeboe, for the roots. You need to learn some great lessons from David's attitude in swiftly doing the needful in order to triumph over Goliath in today's Bible reading. Beyond the fact that he was fervent in spirit, he was also physically alert in getting his job done. He did not allow the battle to meet him standing still. 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 48 tells us what they did. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. He quickly took the battle to the enemy on his own times, 
The story gets even more interesting after Goliath fell. Observing that Goliath might have been knocked out unconsciously or might be feigning death, David ran to where he fell and climbed over him and cut off his head with Goliath's own sword, putting an end to any hope of his resurgence. I prophesy over you today that your enemies will be totally decapacitated and you will have complete peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful lesson from David there. The attitude of, of, of uh, 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 goal getting, the attitude of, of being swift in business. You see, and like the father said here, uh, David understood the spiritual aspect of, 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 of life and also understood the physical aspect of life. Uh, the fact that he had engage God in the fight to, against Goliath does not mean he shouldn't also engage, I mean, align himself to that battle. The Bible says he ran to David, to Goliath. Uh, even though, of course, it was not the stone that actually killed Goliath. It was the finger of God that killed Goliath. It was God that I mean, dealt with Goliath. But David also ran to us to kill Goliath. Like he said there, yeah, I mean, he didn't take it for granted that, well, if we have said, oh, well, let me just, probably it was the guy feigned death. Maybe he, was, he has not even died and he's just left it like that. But he said, let me finish the job. Let me get the job done by cutting the head of Goliath and of course now give, gaining the victory for Israel. I want to challenge us. You see, God will help us. But as God will help us, we must also be willing to help ourselves. We must also be willing to engage in product in our in, in, in industry in in being diligent in whatever we do especially as christians god is look counting on us as christians this time around the holy spirit anointing is there the grace of god is there the, the blessing of god is already inside of us but we must translate these to reality by engaging our hands to work Mm, amen. That's so powerful and so profound. Thank you so much, sir. And to our viewers out there, let's continue on to our next record, which will be used for our hymn. We'll be singing in four. As soon as we come back, we'll come back with a memory verse for you. Please stay with us. Action is the thing, the missing link between knowing and becoming. Welcome back from that hymn, and if you're just joining us, you're tuned into this presence, and this is the time of the program where we discuss our memory verse. Our memory verse is taken from Romans chapter 12 and verse 11. The Bible says, not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. And in line with that, there's a prayer pointed that you also pray for our viewers. Our Father in the Lord said we should pray, Father, to the glory of your name, please quicken my body, soul, and spirit to be swift and diligent in all my assignments in life. In Jesus' name. Yes, yeah, shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege as we again ask O oh god that you will quicken our spirit soul and body that will be swift in business will be will be will be productive in whatever we do we will seize the moment we will seize the opportunity we will not be lethargic in life but we will uh, be goal oriented and of course pursue the assignment that you have given unto us that in every every area of our lives in our in our career in our field of endeavors that we will learn how to use the grace that you have given unto us to work we put the grace to work and we experience the blessing therein help us holy spirit and help our viewers and our listener in the name of jesus Amen. amen amen in jesus name thank you so much and to our viewers out there let's continue on to our prophecy declaration with our father in the law pastor e -A -A -A. please stay with us we'll be right back the lord will answer all your prayers the grace never to offend god again receive it now in jesus name. The Almighty God will arise for you. He will arise for your families. He will arise for his church. 
It will arise for your nation. You will not die before your time. All your dreams of greatness shall be fulfilled. You will shine at home. You will shine abroad. You will shine everywhere. Whatever you touch will begin to prosper. God will accelerate your promotion. He will take you to the top. For the rest of your life, you will operate under divine favor. It shall be well with you. God will fulfill all your dreams. He will grant all your requests. And your joy shall overflow. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Someone shout Welcome back from that prophecy declaration. I believe you've claimed every prophecy that has gone forth on you. So before we let you go, I'll be your final thoughts to our viewers. Yeah, I want to say that uh, in life we must ready to take action. Take action. That's the see between your uh, uh, knowing the principles and of course getting the result is action action is the thing the missing link between knowing and becoming and of course i want to engage every, encourage every one of us to take action in whatever we do take action every day and learn to surround yourself with winners never allow yourself to get to a point where you you plateau or you to you you peak you come to a peak where you say, well, I've achieved everything. No. For every level, there is always the next level. Whatever achievement you have achieved right now, you can also achieve more. So move on. Get, get yourself into action. They, you still have days ahead of you. You have years ahead of you. You have time ahead of you as, you are, as long as you are alive to get the vision of God in your life to reality. So I want to encourage you, take action today and seek God helping you. In the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much. I will celebrate God in your life. And we are confident that he that has begun a good work will perfect in you to the very end in Jesus' name. Amen. And above all, thank you for making time to be with us. On thank you very much. It's my pleasure. I really amen. appreciate it. Amen. And so, of yours, I believe you've learned so many things on our topic today. Be swift in your business. According to what Apostle Godwin Akita actually said, he said, being swift in business talks about highly productive lifestyle. We need to engage the principles of diligence and determination, getting things done at the right time. And with the right strategy, then seizing the opportunity at the right time, then why should we be swift in our business? It's so that we can be at the top, so as not to live life as in being dominated. And he said, so it also leads to profit and satisfaction. He gave us the how we can be swift in our business. He said we need to engage some principles, and the first one is principle of excellence, then positive attitude, and then we need to engage the force of the focus of the right action. We really want to appreciate you for the time you spent to watch this program, and I believe you will be blessed in the mighty way. Perhaps you have any comments, you want to leave us and guess who shall with us on Facebook, and I want to say keep watching our time. God bless you. <laughs>